Hi. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Councilman Capel for his intrepid support of our rights to use uh, all taxis. Um, the bill was introduced over two years ago. Oh, I should also point out that Senator Tom Harkin, the ADA sponsor, primary sponsor of the ADA in 1990, wrote a letter to Chairman Baca, which I have here today, congratulating the two of you, Chairman Baca for having the hearing and Councilman Capel for forcing you to have the hearing. Um, and and uh, uh, I, I know, uh, Councilmember Baca, that you said you think your constituents should have accessible cabs. Will you sign on as a sponsor of, uh, please, please, because, because we really do need to, to get common sense to, to rule here. Um, do I, I do have Senator Harkin's letter in my office, and it will be admitted as part of the record. Thanks. I read it this morning. Uh, during the, 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 the time that Councilmember Capel introduced his bill and now, there have been at least three major lawsuits about taxis. There has been state legislation about our issue that passed, and all of it is because the council has failed to act. Now's the time. It's going to get too late. Uh, I was involved in the, in the struggle to make New York City's buses and subways accessible. I am telling you that when a court decides things, the result is a mess. Koch insisted that Accessor Ride was cheaper than accessible transportation. Last year, $500 million on Accessor Ride. That's the cost of running the Metro North Railroad. We're not talking about peanuts. $200 million on Medicaid ambulettes. Tens of other millions on vocational rehabilitation transportation by ambulat, Department of Veterans Affairs medical transportation, all in the five boroughs. You have the ability to save taxpayers a fortune by transferring that ride from the expensive accessor ride system over $60 a ride and expensive Medicaid ambulance services to accessible taxis. You can, the bill that passed in Albany a little over a year ago, which would have required planning, none of that planning has gone on because the commission has behaved as if their dispatch plan is the plan to do this. And there is no plan for the other four boroughs. It would have happened already. It would have been done because they wouldn't have been able to sell their medallions under that bill unless a plan was completed in a year. We've wasted all this time. Now is the time for the council to act. Speaker Quinn railed against taxis when two gay men were asked to leave a cab for being affectionate in the back of a cab. She wanted a federal investigation over two passengers. There are tens of thousands of wheelchair users in this city, countless visitors to this city, who, by the way, know nothing about the dispatch program, that come in wheelchairs, that can't get around. And no one is upset except people in chairs and on scooters. I'm 62 years old. I'm a baby boomer. My contemporaries are going to be scooting around this city before you know it. And we are going to be demanding accessible services. It seems crazy to have this taxi of tomorrow. Somebody should have asked the commissioner, would you have picked this taxi in its accessible form as the taxi of tomorrow, with one passenger on one side of the partition and the wheelchair user in the back, with a mother with two children who has to either take two cabs and doubling the cost of her ride and put her child alone in one cab? Would, would that have ever won a design competition? Ask the yellow cab owners. Do they love the taxi of tomorrow? Would it have won a design competition? The answer will be no. The answer will be no, yet this city and the Bloomberg administration is going ahead willy-nilly, full, full speed ahead with Nissan. The last thing I want to say is the only thing the mayor has said about this, this, this policy of not making cabs accessible but 20 percent, if the councilwoman had asked, what about my black and Latino constituents who can't get a cab? What if the commissioner said to her, we're going to do a plan to get you 20% of the cabs? <laughs> Wouldn't she have been outraged? Yes. That's what you're telling this population. Right. Don't worry. We're going to get you 20%. It's not going to work. Blacks and Latinos and women and religious minorities are just separated by commas in the statutes of the New York State Human Rights Law and the New York City Human Rights Law. Let's be fair to everybody. The only thing the mayor has said about this is incredibly bigoted if you substitute any other minority group. He said, 
my favorite one is that disabled people will sit too far away from the driver in an accessible cab to establish a rapport with the driver, and therefore they'll be poor tippers. He really did say that. He also said that able-bodied people won't like the ride in an accessible cab, and so that they shouldn't do it. And then he also said that they shouldn't retrofit cabs, that they should be factory manufactured to be accessible, that it's silly to retrofit. Yet every single Nissan NV200 that has to be accessible will be sent from the factory to Indiana to be retrofitted. The taxi policy you're looking at up to now is hamburger. It's just scrambled. It's chopped up. It's rethought every time there's litigation, every time there's legislation. It's got to be comprehensive, and we've got to start here. And here is make every taxi accessible. It's on the table right in front of you. If you don't, you're meeting as a deliberative body and deciding to exclude people with disabilities. It seems awfully discriminatory on its face to do that. So I implore you to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.